present you a um, really, really irresistible, simple thing. I'm gonna present you the story of a button. Um, I don't know how many of you heard of uh, Alterego or how many of you visit our, visited our uh, booth. Okay, that's perfect because we don't want to repeat our, uh, our information. So we're going to present you the, the story of a startup. Uh, as Alexandra told you, uh, we only have six weeks. Uh, we're, yeah, we only have six weeks since we've uh, started this, uh, this button. And uh, we're going to show you how it was, how it was born and um, how we think it's going to evolve um, through the next period. And of course, if there are other people here who dream to open a startup, just to see how things are done um, in real life. So I'm gonna let uh, Ovi uh, start the presentation because uh, he was the first one um, here. Yeah, we can definitely tell you first why we started this. And um, I'm sure that it's something which, uh, is it better now? Yeah. Which all of you can relate to. Um, I went to a store and I bought a toy for my two-year-old daughter. And uh, after I bought the toy, they gave me a card. Um, register here and you get 20% off for all your next purchases. Become a VIP, yes. I'm gonna do that. I, uh, evening comes, I go back home, I go to the website, I hit register and I'm presented with a login form. Email and password. Confirm the password. Okie dokie. That's good. Every, uh, every person here has been doing this for a huge time now, and uh, that's how we've all learned that uh, we should behave on the internet. Um, what um, happened afterwards is, in order to receive the discount, I got promoted. Uh, fill up this form and get 20% off. And um, it asked me there, how much money do I make? How much money does my wife make? How many toys do we buy? How old is my um, are my kids? How many do I have if I have kids outside of the marriage? If you want um, to make uh, more kids, yeah. how many <laughs> Maybe something kids like that. are going to make this week and stuff like that? Yeah, um, um, what are their birthdays and a huge set of information um, that I really, when I started typing, I just typed because I was just like everybody in here, I was just a monkey. But then halfway through the survey, I started noticing that um, I am giving these guys a crap load of information, aren't I? I was definitely giving them a lot of information. The website didn't look that good. It was uh, okay -ish. Um Now, instinct tells me that if the website is maybe half-baked, the back end is a mess. And they've got a clear line to the guys doing the um, contest in the other rooms. And I, I, I'm not really willing to, I, I'm not that private, but I'm not really willing to give up all my precious, precious information uh, just in order to get a discount. Sure, it would be nice and I'm a cheap bastard and I would love a discount further on. I would even want them to alert me whenever something like a new, maybe they've got a promotion or when my uh, kids' uh, birthdays come along, uh, maybe they give me something special for them or they alert me that, uh, look, this is in store now. And I definitely want that. And I would be willing to share that information. But going as far as giving too much um, felt over the top. Now, the form was long. And I thought, well, I know some programming. And I can script it to fill up with gibberish. It just guides everywhere. How that sound? Well, um, that really isn't, doesn't sit right with me, because I want to give them something in return for those 20% off. And um, I, it didn't feel right to not give them anything. But uh, they don't really care what my name is. Um, I'm still going to go in the store and give them some money for that. Um, so here's where the idea, where our idea came from. How about if we automate the entire process of registering on any website online? And on the other side of the, of the story was the non-technical person from this team. Um, and I guess you, you know who it is. Me, of course. Yeah. Um, who and just... He was presented with something like that. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm an advertiser. Um, recently I became really um, security conscious because as many of my friends, I'm a regular user, non-technical one, but uh, many of my friends told me that, dude, I don't care if my uh, email is broken, I, I got nothing to hide. So, uh, why we are calling this a button? Because we want to make the product really easy to use and really easy to understand from a broader type of consumers, not only the technical ones. Um, once, uh, uh, sorry, yesterday when we've uh, held the presentation at uh, our booth, uh, a lot of you 
um, asked us, dude, are you kidding me, a button? And I was like, yeah, it's a rectangular stuff. You press it and it fills out a lot of things for you. It's just a button for me, for a regular user. Um, that's why uh, when I when I needed to, to fill some, a uh, uh, lot of things uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, when I needed to uh, give a lot of information for, for some sites, I wasn't really um, um, scared about uh, leaving my personal information, but frankly, I'm too lazy to, to put all this information. And if somebody tells me that, okay, you can do this uh, only with a button and really simple, and be anonymous, well, that would be better as, as well. And all of this here is basic information. Everybody does that on all times. What we are presenting with something like this. Yeah, it, it continued. The, the, and the hell continues. This. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes on. So we thought, Eureka, why, don't, uh, why, why should we fully expose everywhere? So why shouldn't I just give them the stuff that they care about. <laughs> uh, we shouldn't just be like that on the internet, should we? <laughs> um, that's a cool, um, cool stuff. And um, probably we are we aren't just monkeys. We are just naked online, and um, they know all the information that um, we gave them. And even more than that, um, when we post something on a website and something else on another website, uh, we are tracked. Usually we're tracked by, by our email registration, uh, but we are also tracked by cookies and other stuff. Our a uh, direct problem that we are trying to solve is registering on a crap load of websites all around the internet and yeah, trying to make that button simple. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> the guys also know that. So, uh, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do this and see uh, we're going to show you how uh, how the whole thing was was born. Yeah. So the the first task that uh, uh yeah, we had. had in project alter ego was to make sure that we aren't just addressing the technical guys. And in order to do that, a technical person needs to get out of his head. And uh, I'm sure that many of you can relate here. We go all in and we build a lot of technology that only we can use. And uh, I'm a very, very culprit of that. So the first task was to find someone that can make it really, really simple and that uh, resonated with the problem, understood it and wanted to do something to help everybody on the internet on that. So the first task was to find someone really different. And uh, that's how the two of us connected and started this initiative. And um, yeah, we, we wanted to be different, but we wanted to resonate with uh, the problem at hand. We wanted to make sure that we're trying to solve the right things and not just steal information, maybe sell it to the third parties. That's one of our core tenants, why, why we exist. And we don't really have any telemetry and stuff like that to track what people are doing in our uh, platform. So we wanted to be both different and but, the same uh, the similar in some, in some cases. So we found out actually that a technical and non-technical person can be really similar without even knowing. Yeah, and now, now you think that uh, this is something that only big companies can do. And uh, we are definitely, we have been working with big companies and are working and we love working there. The problem that we have is that you don't really need an office. You don't really need uh, too much equipment. We are running our backend servers for the cost of two Starbucks coffees, um, and it really scales tremendously. So what our plan is to be, um, what are we gonna do about an office? And we, we found our, that our best location is to just sync up on our, uh, on our rooftop and just talk things out. Yeah, because we're also neighbors. <laughs> so the, the first office, uh, it was an office with a view. It was kind of windy, but it was really nice. And uh, it was really productive because uh, we had the first meeting. Yeah, we had the first meeting and we definitely had the first result. And this uh, this this how, how it looked, our first meeting. This was the first meeting notes. But uh, I don't know if you can see there, if, if, you, if I can have another click. Yes. Uh, that's, got... when, that's when Alter Ego was born. So, born. So uh, Ovidio came to me and said, dude, I have a really cool idea, let's, let's do this. So it virtually exactly. happened in like 30 minutes and that's uh, how all it began. So we had the name, it was pretty important and all the other crap, so we needed to, to do a website. So we started sketching at a, a website. So this was the first, uh, the first um, website that we built on a paper. Um, and we put it, uh, and we tried to put it online. It, yep. 
and we started working, we aren't really web developers, and uh, but we do know some programming. So we thought, how about uh, I keep, I listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, th those podcasts have commercials in them. And um, some of them are for um, hosting service, ho hosting companies that also build your website for a couple of dollars. So we decided to do something like that, to use the pre-built template and we had a huge rock band and we were called Cyber Alter Ego. Yeah, so, okay, <laughs> dude, this is not what yeah, we were intending to, to tell our consumers that we're a rock band. So this was our first, uh, our first attempt to, to build a website. And well, you go. Yeah, on. afterwards uh, we tried to, to go a little bit deeper and build something like this which was really crappy and wasn't online for, for not even 30 minutes. <laughs> and afterwards we, we've uh, gone to a slightly better uh, option this one, this is our website. Please uh, take a photo with it, uh, or if you want to, to register, please go to cyberartalego.com. Uh, this is homemade, uh, like uh, our uh, grandma's uh, <laughs> cookies. cookies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're live for a couple of weeks. We're in public beta for uh, less than a month. Um, just uh, probably in a couple of days, we'll be out for a month. We did a private alpha before, and we've evolved a lot. And um, right now we're going to tell you a bit, uh, we told you why it matters and we plan to tell you how we're solving this. Um, we want to show you how we've developed the button to make it that, that, that easy and uh, what it does in the backend because it's phenomenal what you can do these days with uh, just infrastructure and uh, just some coding skills. So um, let's tell you a bit about uh, how the button goes. Yeah, so we had... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> okay. should I tell it? Uh, so we started like this. I've been, uh, I, I've, I'm trying to fill up the form for my daughter's um, registration for my do uh, for my daughter's discount for for toys, and I'm thinking, okay, I know how to do some Python, so let me build some script there. And then, uh, yeah, I know how I know how the terminal works on the uh, on Linux machines, and um, I've got I got something like this. This is the first button. You need to pipe commands. You need to tell it where. It where it should go, what it does. You need to do a very, very, very long set of things. I, I could barely make it work, but it did work. And uh, it had uh, bits and pieces that we are going to use afterwards. And this is, it's really messy. And it shows how the sausage is being made in here. Uh, but it's, it's nice to do. So um, I brought this up with uh, Chip. And uh, that was his response. Yeah, and I said, oh, dude, this looks really tremendous, man. It's really nice, but uh, let's just make a button. Okay, so you push it and magic happens. Okay, cool. So that's obviously exactly how I did. We went through various stages and we also had the feedback of our really close friends. Uh, we opened it up in alpha for uh, 10 of our really close friends, not just people that we know, just like you know you guys, but uh, some may be living in other countries. We wanted to make sure that uh, we are really testing the product and when we're coming out with it, it's safe. Uh, most of them are hackers. It's secure, uh, it's, um, it's private. It doesn't leak information. And uh, also, very importantly, for something that's out there and everybody can use it, uh, scales and it does its job well. And um, it's as much bug, uh, bug free as possible. So this is the first version. We, I'm just filling up forms in here. It just, if you can see up top, uh, this is the first button. It's setting up new egos for me. And every time I hit refresh, it uh, fills up random information. It gives me an email address. But then we thought, OK, this is a bit intrusive because we're modifying the HTML of the page. So we went out with a, a browser extension, which this is the first one. It looked miles, miles better than the first, than uh, the alpha one. Um, well, almost it's a bit of a joke between us, but um, we only iterated on changes on um, uh, alpha 1, 3, and 7, and we did uh, tech backend changes on the um, even ones. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is how it, uh, this is um, it evolving. If you can notice here, we've got the passwords in clear text, and we thought, okay, someone may be shoulder surfing. So let's, this is just another uh, critical piece of feedback that we've got. So how about if we just see it when you hover it? So that's what we've done. We, we iterated further, further, further. So this is alpha 7 here. Um, it does, um, the, um, the interface started, um, having less clutter. It's better for you guys when uh, you're browsing the web, you don't really care about buttons doing their backend work. Uh, what's really important is that the information is there. So then we had one um, very productive beer night when we decided this is too much as well. So we went with something like this. This is beta. We've, we've tried to reduce as much as possible the, the load of information that you're exposed to because uh, either you're a technical or a non-technical person, uh, 
the, the time and the, the information that you're uh, exposed to is the same, right? So we want to make things really, really simple for all of you people. That's why we're trying to, to simplify all of this as much as possible. The, the pre previous version, for example, they worked really fine, but they were uh, um, covering a lot of page. So, okay, what, what the hell is happening? Yeah, that, so this that is beta right now. Page real estate is quite important. Um, and um, so we figured that early. And um, let us tell you now a bit about what this button is good for. You've kind of seen a bit in Alpha 1, and we've been telling you bits and pieces of information. Uh, let's go ahead and tell you everything that it does in the back end. So um, let's see what this button is actually really good for. Well, yeah, first of one um, is uh, saying crap on internet. You <laughs> never know what's going to happen and how it's going to backfire, you know. I recently uh, made, uh, um, recently, a few years ago, I posted a, a photo with, uh, with uh, a car which we thought we, it belonged to, to the church and things got wrapped up. I didn't know about that. Uh, yeah, but when you try to get a job somewhere, everything that is written down and especially written down in your name or written down with your email address is easily tracked down by, uh, I'm not trying to pick on, but it's tracked down by HR and you get flagged that's not being uh, the type of person that should be working there. And that's the basic example, but maybe even when you try to meet a friend online, you Google them or uh, when you try to meet a new business partner or, uh, I don't know, associate, potential lover or stuff. Yeah, so that's the basic thing that you do firstly, you Google them. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very conscientious of that. And now, um, let's see a bit. Um, this was about the name and the person. Let's talk a bit about your email address, which is really private and you hold it dear. So, uh, who here knows this website? Have I been pwned? Okay, that's a huge, huge crowd. So, and that's perfect. And uh, this is my, one of my email addresses. I've been already pwned four times. And um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the... Um, number of pawns that you get. Uh, it's inevitable that websites will be hacked. What we ideally want is that, um, and what we're aiming for is that all our email addresses, the ones that we give you, we give it to you for free, the aliases for your email addresses, um, only appear to have just one pawnage if it happens somewhere. And then you have the power and you know what to do about that. It's a unique identifier between you and every uh, entity online where you reg uh, register. And um, so you know it's something, they either be hacked or information has been leaked. But the, the, those two um, the, uh, sets of data are very important and you know if something happened. You are now in control. And um, we've also uncovered that it's good for something as well, uh, side thing. And um, it's, um, well, we, I think we all know that uh, from a psychological point, point of view, um, if you're covered by uh, uh, an anonymous identity, you can be more honest on the internet. Maybe you have a problem and you need to, to solve, uh, to, to see what's uh, on the internet, what, what are the solutions, but you don't want to log in with Facebook. Maybe you want to, to say something really honest about, uh, about a thing, but you don't want to expose your own personality. So, uh, what you can do with this, uh, with this button is to um, log in anonymous with, a, uh, with another uh, ID and just say, whatever you think about uh, a product, let's say, or whatever it, uh, it yeah. comes on the internet. Political views, um, there's also we uh, just learned from our um, uh, friends that visited the stands that it's extremely useful in medical situations. Um, everybody browses online when they have a cough or, cough or something, and uh, everybody browses uh, what does Google, Dr. Google say when I've got something even worse than that, and no one wants to write on a form on their name that something grown or it's bad, <laughs> what do I do? Or even maybe STDs or other sort of disease that you really want to learn more about, but you still want to keep your uh, privacy and uh, be able to uh, just do a good job afterwards. So uh, that's, that's something really collateral that we're really, really glad we're fixing. And uh, that's awesome. Of course, a lot of people uh, told us that, okay, so it's going to, you're going to generate a lot of uh, hate on the internet. Well, actually, the haters or the trolls will be on the internet with or without us. If you're a troll or you, uh, you, you want to, to make uh, hate comments, you'll do it either way. So, Perfect. So now uh, demo time comes. Um, let us show you how easy it is to uh, just run it. Uh, let me open a browser window. I've got here 
Oops, it's good. Uh, this is our website, and you probably don't care about that. Um, we've got a browser extension, which is out on the right. It's the only one installed here for this browser. And we're going to go to a website that you normally register. Uh, let's use a really big brand name, and uh, we're going to go to Twitter. And just watch up top the extension, what it does. Right here. It just saw that this is a form. Let me make it a bit bigger. It just saw that it's a form. And it saw that uh, this is some information that I can provide as alter ego. And I can help you guys do that. And it's really, really easy. What, what an user needs to do is just go here. You've got an identity. Your name is Mary here. And you press one button. And magic happens. Well, actually, uh, people were really uh, astonished about this, not because it's very, uh, really technical and it's uh, uh, not a thing very, very evolved, but it's just magical how it fills all the form by itself. The and effect is just wonderful. Exactly, and it gives you all the information that you need. This is, uh, these are all the information about Mary that we are generating so far. And uh, the email address that you saw there, 247 something something, this is just a proxy, an alias. All the email that Twitter sends also uh, go through this alias, but they end up on your personal Gmail account. But when a website get ha gets hacked, or when your information gets leaked, it's this, uh, this unique email is just like uh, you it's unique in the world, and you're only going to use it on this website. So you know if something happened, this is where, um, this is where it's fishy. And um, this is, we've got also a backend console. And in here, uh, you saw that I've already registered on uh, some websites, and I'm going to do refresh now. And you see, this is Mary from Twitter. I've got all her details here. And if I don't really care about this account, and uh, maybe you know, I don't think that Twitter will get hacked, but uh, maybe they will get hacked a couple of times, and I don't want this account, I can just delete it. And now there's absolutely no way ever possible for them to connect, connect, uh, connect that information back to you. It's uh, just like it's the best spam filter ever. But we aren't really doing that. We are trying to protect personalities. And um, let's see, OK, Twitter is back. And we want to do uh, more accounts. I'm going to do a refresh on the browser. And um, let me see if I, if I can create one again. This is a Rileys. I don't really care about the Rileys. I can uh, let me see more information. And um, let me try again. And I wanted to create something else. This is uh, Samantha. I don't want to be a Samantha. I don't want to be a Nicholas, maybe a couple of times. And when I'm set, OK, Max. I love Max. So let me do a Max. And yeah, then I've, I'm so just, nice. this is it. Um, You've got, instead of uh, Mary, which was the previous one, you've got Max now, and you're on Twitter as Max. This is for registering on new accounts. But we can also do that for all the websites online. Let's, uh, let's go to another one that everybody uses. It's LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to go to LinkedIn, Oop, and I'm going to try to register. If you see the button just popped up that I can register, and I'm filling all the information, and this is me on LinkedIn. I can use this information, or I can change my name there instead of Johnny to be Ovidio Diaconescu and uh, still use the protected email addresses. I'm doing that for all my social network accounts that I use at home, for, all my, for Dropbox and stuff. I don't really use that that much. But for everything that's not email, um, I'm using that. I, I'm using my real name on uh, Facebook and on LinkedIn. It's against their terms of service not to do that. And I don't want to do that. I'm, we aren't enabling spammers. We're just protecting everybody that needs that extra set of um, attention online. And um, that's about it. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead with um, oh, enter. Uh, this stuff always happens <laughs> yeah. in presentation. Yeah, yeah, the the presentation, uh, um, the gods weren't with us tonight. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead. Chip will tell you a bit more about. Um, yes. So we're going to show you what we are planning for the future uh, with uh, with this button. Yeah, we've got the huge set of ideas. And we know that we're, we're onto something really well. And we know that because uh, you don't see each other, but I see some of you laughing and smiling and uh, maybe wanting to use that when you get home. And it's free to use. And it's free for as many websites as you want online. And it's always going to be free. It's never tracked. We have two, two websites. One is our, uh, um, well, maybe one is our presentation website, where we do have Google Analytics just to know how we can use people better, but our dashboard has no analytics on it at all. Our backend has no analytics on it at all. We don't really, we don't care who you are. The only thing that we ask is an, um, in, at the start is just to um, know that you're a human being that has an email which we can forward stuff to, and that's it. We, this is, 
this is what we've got so far. And um, about what's coming, we've got um, a couple of things. You've seen uh, what information we're filling right now for Samantha on Twitter, what was her name, maybe Brandon or something, and on LinkedIn. So we've got, these are the new things that are coming right now. And we've got them on the pipeline. They should be coming really, really well. We're doing something really cool and amazing with the phone numbers. Uh, there are websites where you need to register, you get a, a text message back and you need to fill in the code. So those text messages, I don't care about your phone number. Those text messages will appear on your dashboard and you're gonna see them there. The phone number that gets allocated to you is a phone number that you can use for 24 or 48 hours just to get the notification that you need. And if you need it afterwards, we're gonna send, give it back to you. But that's only part of the story. We're also doing something else. We're doing credit cards as well. And these are real credit cards that are generated on the name, on the um, alternate identity that you want. These are actually debit cards, and you can go purchase something in uh, China or somewhere else, not put your data there. It's really coming. We are working on partnerships to make this cheap. Right now, it's a, sort of an expensive uh, after cost. But we are doing the, the cost. Uh, the, the cards are valid Visa cards. They have on them just the exact amount that you want and that you need to, to purchase everything that you need in there. And I've used that. I've used uh, one of my accounts to purchase more toys. And uh, it, uh, the um, the cost of the toys was around $22 uh, from a website in China, not AliExpress, but something else, where I wouldn't want to post my information, even though it was um, SSL or around the stuff, but still. So I used a credit card, a debit card like that. Uh, the total cost uh, went up by around $10, and I think that's not fair. Uh, we are planning to grow like hell and bring this cost down really to something like half a um, 50 cents maybe a dollar, and this is really decent because right now for a $20 two set of uh, toys, uh, you don't really pay, want to pay 50% extra for privacy, but you would be able to pay $1. And um, when you're going to buy a new MacBook or something which is $700 or more, uh, $10 don't really matter, but for small purchases, that is the bulk uh, of, uh, the, um, of the small transactions, uh, that, that that's not fair, and we want to make it really, really as cheap as possible, but still be able to um, use the privacy that we are um, offering, uh, be able to use that card and purchase anywhere, and ship it to the address that you want, and we're also probably working on something like that as well. <laughs> well, yeah, in the future. And um, let's see what's coming, number two. Uh, this is one of our ideas that um, we want your feedback, feedback upon. Um, we're trying to fill um, as much information as possible. But sometimes when you go on a Polish website or a French website or a Swedish or Greek one, maybe we don't fill the fields right. Just because everybody codes HTML differently and uh, not really codes, but maybe they do naming differently. And uh, we thought, okay, so let's use a dictionary to map properly. But that, that solution only took us so far and we're doing that. But right now what we're implementing is we're making an AI and every time you help the platform, to fill a code uh, or you just type it by hand or we also, we also have a copy button within the extension. When you do that, we are all teaching the platform to be better. We're all teaching both the platform and afterwards we can uh, maybe use the way our uh, machine learned and um, tell the guys maybe create a standard. Uh, this is way too outrageous. In the start, we just want to make it better and we thought that we, the two of us can scale but we can scale with everybody uh, that uh, uses our extension, and we can scale just by using some computation there, and we really don't need that many people to do that, which is phenomenal. And uh, this is Chip's favorite. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the coolest one is, uh, I think everybody knows uh, what's happening with login with Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you avoid this step or just uh, have a another uh, fake email or fake Facebook uh, or fake LinkedIn, wherever. Well, we're planning to launch uh, the button also as, a, uh, as, an as an alternative for logging in to different sites. So you log in uh, anonymous with alter ego. What that happens, the, the backend is very complicated, but in order to use it, you, in this uh, scenario, you don't even need a browser extension. It works just everywhere. Uh, you, everything that you do, it's an uh, open ID connect server in the backend. We don't really care about, we don't, we just obsolete passwords. Because just the tokens between our server and the website that you want uh, certify that you are a real human being. And that you um, are who you say you are, that you aren't a bot or a script or something. 
uh, that you are a valid uh, person that wants to have access to some resources and cares about what's in there. And uh, this information is really valuable to register online. But we had the number 3.1 idea, which is even better, and it takes this a couple of steps further. So what we thought is, or we already know that uh, you're a trusted user. And uh, we love you for that. And we know, you, we know that you aren't uh, scams or bots because our platform tries to protect against that. So um, tying that with the scenarios that Chip was telling you, uh, the ones that we're already doing really well, the ones about uh, privacy online and being able to comment on websites and everything. Right now, when you go to comment on a blog or a news agency, um, you, are, whoop, you are presented in something like this. So you need to fill your name. You don't really want your name, and then maybe you won't comment at all. Then uh, they want your email address, but you don't really want to give them an email address, and maybe some of you use a um, disposable email address, or they, you just have a uh, Yahoo mail just for spam, like I do, or uh, I used to do. And um, so that's still a bit too complicated. And what that happens, um, if you are a bit aware of about how um, the online markets work, bloggers and news agencies, they uh, have hundreds of thousands of views and 20 comments. Is that fair from those 20 comments? Do you think that uh, are they able to see or sense what their um, audience is feeling? Uh, we, we don't think it's right. And it's not right because right now the process, this process is way too complicated to do that. Well, actually, it, it's just a, a thing of commodity, man. Come on. I mean, let's forget about this and maybe uh, just log in with another button with alter ego and comment as a as another uh, user uh, a protected one um, and if you exactly. do that maybe you'll have a more open and more honest uh, review about uh, something on about something on a website and of course if you're scared about uh, as i told you haters and you know things that you can do when you're not uh, connected with your real personality well most of the comments are all already um, screened by somebody. So, yeah, if you want to be evil online, yeah. it's easy to be evil online. Everybody who wants to be evil online finds a way to be evil online. What we're and we are sure that the, uh, this software, as any software, can be used for malicious purposes as well. Um, so it's just a risk management thing. We we think we can do it better than others. Um, and we, are, we know that we are helping everybody that has a public thing, a public blog, a public website, a public news, anything, feed, anything that requires comments. Um, right now they're curating it um, a lot and uh, they care about, uh, um, they are stripped about the information uh, that tells them uh, the black side of the story, the other side of the story, the information. Uh, they are already stripping everybody that's swearing. They are stripping stuff uh, that um, they may really need that. Uh, it, it's it's um, helpful for a blogger to know uh, if, he's being, if his articles are just um, provoking swears in his viewership. Maybe he can adapt to that. And we can, we can help here. We yeah, are. we are stimulating communication, basically. So, yeah, we're leveling for everybody that uh, maybe is or is not a hater, we're giving them the, um, the possibility to do that. And um, um, I think I've read a survey, just like, you know, everybody trusts the British uh, scientists or something, or the American scientists from the University of something, something, right? <laughs> and uh, exactly. And um, they, uh, they said that out of, um, out of the, all the human beings here, 1% of us are always evil. 1% is always good. 98% just depends. We can be or we can't be evil. It just depends on the circumstance, circumstances. And what we're doing right now, we, we can't protect for the 1% that are evil. And, but we're trying to. Uh, the ones that are really, really well, those are the ones that post, post online right now. And those are the ones that uh, the bloggers and the news agencies are interacting to. What we're doing is we're actually liberating the rest of the 19% of the feedback that they may want. And that's huge it's, for them. Well, yeah, it's pretty fine. So um, that's about it. We're doing addresses next. We're doing uh, company names. We're doing phone numbers, just like we told you, and credit cards. We're also doing the uh, AI to make sure that we're doing a much, much better job for all of you that trust us right now. Uh, we're doing the OpenID Connect server, and uh, we want to push it to, um, we're also building the backend so that the bloggers just need to do one click, and we're, they've enabled alter ego comments. And um, 
What do you think? Any other ideas? Yeah, and if you have we, questions, We've been talking please. for a while. We need to get a glass of water. So well, yeah, what you do you have think? Water ideas? There. Shoot. Hey, um, how about um, off offline uh, saving? So I want to save my details uh, in an offline, uh, uh, let's see, a CSV file. And I want to export that to a different uh, place, a different computer. That's perfect. And uh, let me see if I got the information correct. You want from our dashboard to export, export the real information, just because maybe you want to leave Alter Ego and go use it in some place else. And we had that. It's in our topmost list. We use an agile approach to build st software. It's just not built yet, but it's coming, and it's coming really soon. And we're going to be building both exports and imports so that um, we're We've doing, we are doing some password management, but we aren't doing it just right. And we aren't, do, we aren't offering all the features that a professional password manager does, like LastPass or 1Password, or maybe uh, others that are built into browsers. And we love them, and we don't want to uh, step on their toes. They do a very, very good job. But maybe sometimes you want to export something from there and import it on our platform. Maybe sometimes you want to export something from us and send it there. That's absolutely perfect, and you can do that. And I can top it off with something else. If you're an enterprise or a company and wants to have direct access to our backend, we also have a public API. Uh, another question is uh, who will handle the proxy performance? So let's say you'll pick up, you'll have a very great, you'll have a success uh, and you'll have a Good great question. number of people accessing your Good proxy. question about the performance and that's perfect. Uh, we are using our, uh, we are scaling our servers, our backend servers, and we're actually for some of the proxies, we're relying on third parties. We've built the entire software really, really easily. We knew some coding and we knew how to put bits and pieces together and we're relying a lot on open source technology. And um, yes, we are able to pay more, to scale more. And um, when we scale more, I'm sure that uh, that's, it's a good problem to have. I want to have that problem, give it to me now. <laughs> it's, a, it's the best problem to have because uh, we can just pay and have more servers, but if we have that, that much traffic, it means that we're doing something right. And we've attracted some uh, either small businesses, which we probably are helping a lot. We're targeting maybe small businesses that do QA and need to automate like a 100 email lists and uh, just do automation on top. Uh, we are targeting news agencies or um, marketing. Yeah, or marketing agencies who need uh, more uh, emails and more uh, egos or alter egos and users to, to, to write reviews for the product or to um, see what their team up to on, on the yeah. internet. Exactly, and they are really, really happy to pay. They want to pay because they want priority support and they want to make sure that there's someone at the other end of the line. And yeah, my, the phone that I um, haven't given so far, but I plan to give is actually the phone that my mother calls me in. So it's really, I, I don't have anything to hide. I, I want to be a good person with them. I want to help them and I want to help them grow and they can help us grow um, at the same time. So okay, did it answer your question? Final question. Um, how can we trust you that uh, you don't sell our <laughs> original email to Exactly, and that's the perfect question <laughs> with, uh, with answer this uh, lot of times. From your perspective, it just matters uh, where do you want to risk. From our perspective, we will gain your trust by size. When you all trust Google and other companies to some extent, but you trust it with, your, uh, with the email. And um, as we are growing, you are going to trust us because we don't do anything fishy on the back end. All the information that we see it's just the, email, the proxy email address that you want to send. Everything else is encrypted on our um, table storage, on our backend. Um, everything, the keys are yours. We don't see what's in there. We don't use any telemetry uh, at all right now to track you or to um, know who you are or where you've been or what you're doing or the websites that you're traveling to. Uh, we do plan in the nearby future to protect you against be, uh, being hacked on Alter Ego so that your identities are safe. Um, for example, we're going to uh, try to, um, we're working with Cloudflare um, as a front end for us and um, they also we're pushing a lot of traffic to them. Um, so we've got an option with them or someone, some other uh, sort of companies to make sure that if you are in Romania now and you're in China three seconds later, maybe we'll ask your passphrase again. Because something, either your account has been stolen which is bad and we don't want to show information or you're just using a VPN like CyberGhost and they are, it's perfectly fine, you just enter your password again. This is uh, the sort of information, all banks do that. This is the sort of information that we do plan to use and uh, as we scale more, I think it will um, help keep our data safer than it can be. <laughs> Thank you, next. 
So uh, you are going to link a fake identity to a real uh, bank account to make Yes, we're doing that through our uh, um, PCI compliant uh, partner, and uh, we have um, we are uh, uh, we are um, you, we are leveraging for purchases Braintree payments. Um, we just um, send an invoice, send you an invoice via the way that um, you've used to maybe register on website on our website. If it's um, if you're a pro user or if you're not a pro user, um, we're just going to ask for your PayPal. It works with either PayPal or credit cards. And it doesn't matter. You can, this is a good side thing, but you can register to porn and you're going to see on your invoice it's going to be alter ego tax or something. So, or, uh, yeah, the wife I doesn't I want to know. hire a killer, maybe. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> maybe I want to hire a killer at PayPal. Uh, <laughs> if you want to hire a killer, I think you'll find a suitcase for, for that as well. Or use you your know. service. It's easier. Sorry? Or use your service, it's easier. Well, uh, of <laughs> course, there's, there's a risk there, but uh, bad people will be bad people with or without us, as, uh, yes. uh, as, we go, as we've told you. We're, and, trying uh, to, sorry, we're trying to leverage the playing field so that everybody has at least basic free protection, as much as possible. The ones that want to do harm are the one person that I told you about before. They will always do harm, with or without alter ego. We are doing our best to make sure that we are limiting the amount of harm that they do. And um, you've asked us about trust. This is the only thing that we can do is promise you that we're doing that. And we've shown you a bit of the things that uh, we're doing. And I want to tell you a bit, you can find us in all these browsers. And all the extensions for the browsers are soon to be open sourced and they will be on GitHub. In order for us to appear on these, we these three app stores, uh, browser stores, extension stores, something, we had our code reviewed by the Google and Firefox and Opera. They all said it's OK. They, they said it's not OK because um, they dropped us first because we had, didn't have a privacy policy that had bolds in certain things. Or we didn't have icons with proper uh, uh, sizes or stuff. But once we fixed those things, it was never, never, we never had an issue with them from a coding standpoint. And they did that because our extension it, it can be intrusive because it modifies the data on your website and um, it, you fill in fields that are highly sensitive like passwords. So that's why when they see that, I think it's, we're triggering some of their algorithm that the human being needs to review our code. And it's been reviewed by them and it's gonna be reviewed by an entire community. Really so soon. if Google trusts us, well, that's a pretty good uh, sign for, for a start. Good, thank you. So um, let's talk a bit more. We are extremely active online. Sorry, we have another question. Sure, go ahead. It's question okay, time. Sor sorry. Uh, Don't I be sorry. Please <laughs> just ask sure. us the question. Please be open because your feedback is really, really important for us. As we've told you, we're only here for six weeks. <laughs> uh, so that's we have about uh, 52 users, which is a lot. Trust us on a, on a startup for us. This uh, morning we have 52. Yesterday evening we had 46. Uh, past the private alpha, we had 10, but we grown to 33 just before beta, and uh, we aren't doing um, in um, in the world of uh, small uh, projects. They are looking for hockey stick growth, something like this. We aren't doing that yet, but we're sure that we're just here. <laughs> yes. So who knows? Maybe in two or three weeks, we're gonna have 30 millions. Who knows? That's true. Okay. So I have uh, two questions for you. Cool. Uh, one is th regarding the military password. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I can show you how a password looks like. Okay, it's military because it's really, really strong and bulletproof, actually. Uh, and this is how your password looks like. Well, okay. I don't think you you see it from there, but it has like thirty yeah, something characters or something like that. That's why we call it military password because you're using. As far as I know, uh, we're really, really hard encoding uh, uh, data. Yeah, we, we do we use the system secure random. We just don't use uh, normal random generators uh, that are rely uh, that um, rely on the CPU time. We use the secure ones, which are uh, really encryption uses, and uh, we're generating that based of out of a dictionary of characters. And uh, what we do, we are trying this one uh, with our AI. Because on, we on some websites, you won't be able to log in with a password like this because it's too long or it has a question mark or something. So we're tying our AI to make sure that some websites require have a different set of rules. That's number two, but we're also doing number one right now, which is if they're using jQuery validator or other things, we read the rules there and we generate a password that based to their rules and is as secure as possible. Okay. Sometimes we don't get it right. It's a beta product, so help us make it better. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you for that. Help us help you. <laughs> and uh, another question is regarding the email. What about, you know, I s observe that the email contains cyber alter ego every time. What about if this will be, let's say, blocked at the moment by, I don't know, some of the companies will not allow you to use an email from... That's from a very, very good question. And uh, we know about that. That's why our plan is to grow with you guys. With you as the primary users, you, uh, there is a feature to invite your close friends that you know can benefit from something like this since yesterday or something like else. Uh, we, don't plan to, we've, we don't plan to market it that much. We haven't done um, a lot of outside the community things. We, aren't only, we are only talking to tech uh, fellows and uh, maybe bloggers and journalists. We don't want to uh, have it be mass market right now. We want it to be for persons that love it and for their friends and for their friends' friends and so on. And if this happens and uh, when, when this picks up, it's not a question of uh, if, but uh, how, how our uh, graphs uh, grow. Uh, when this happens, um, we will be so big that uh, all the websites won't be able to block all the cyber alter ego emails. We, we have a backup plan, but we don't want to use it because it, contra um, it, it goes against our core values. We could be using like 10 uh, domains. You can be generating domains all over, and for businesses, we're also doing something else. Uh, we can have a subdomain of theirs, push MX records to us, and we'll be uh, we'll be making emails directly on their business account. Uh, but um, that that doesn't sound right, and we're trying to do the good thing. Even we we either succeed or we go to dust, and that's it. We are bootstrapping this. So we don't really need funding. We are really well just making it on our own, and uh, we want to push it as much as possible. Okay. Thank what do you, you so think much. about the strategy? I'm not sure if it's right. Uh, it's, I think it's good. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. Uh, but definitely, at the moment in time, if uh, problems will show up, definitely, I think we'll, you'll yeah. find a solution. Uh, we've also uh, hit something like that exactly with Facebook. Uh, we've generated some Facebook accounts and we use on our own, and which are valid accounts. Uh, but if, uh, for the demo for, and that, at our booth, for the few days, everybody, we're just asking people, tell us a website where you want to register. And we're trying it. Everybody was telling us Facebook, 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 Facebook. After the uh, I don't know twentieth login, uh, Facebook started asking uh, um, secure codes that were sent in the email, and that's right. And it's very very well that they've done that. And uh, we've definitely since those are valid email addresses that get pushed to your Gmail. You see that you can click the activation link from there. You can see the activation code there. And once you did that, everything is just fine with them. Yeah, honestly, I believe that the Facebook account is going to be a problem because. Facebook learns very well from yes. all this activity, and I don't think that's that's going. We to don't want to create fake Facebook accounts, uh, Facebook accounts, and it's against both uh, both the terms of service of Facebook and against LinkedIn. What we are doing and what I'm doing for my account is I'm just protecting my email address. I want to just change settings, uh, change email, and I generated a new ego there. Even if it gave me a fake name or something, I, I didn't use that. I, I'm just using the alternate email address and. Uh, when LinkedIn got hacked, uh, I, uh, my account got blocked on some other places. This, something like this won't, won't happen. Yeah, and actually, if you want to create a, a fake name, you can just do it by yourself. Just make a, a new brand new email and write crap on Facebook. It's really that easy. So if Facebook wants our data, it can just ask for, for it you know, in a really nice already. way. And maybe we'll give it to them. Yeah, it has it already. So. Sorry? I think it has it already. Yeah. Uh, but thank you. That was a really good question, and uh, yeah, we appreciate that. Cool. Uh, just one more question. Uh, we need to wrap up. We're out of time. Are we done? Yay! Thank you for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, this is pretty awesome, man. Yeah.